silence, forests, and big rivers. This is the world of the Kantai. The people of Thorum. Bear burial rites of the Kantai. The Kantai, also called Ostiaks, are distant linguistic relatives of the Hungarians, Estonians, and Finns. Even today, they are hunters and fishermen of the forests. They make everything from wood, including ovens, to say nothing of burial places for bears, sacrificial poles, and beautiful sleighs. Cants have two homes. In spring, after the hunting season, they move from their winter cabins to Riverside. Each family has its own fishing sites and fishing huts, summer cabins, and beaches for carving out boats. The river is a source of food and at the same time a transportation artery. The Kantai number 20,000. Their area of settlement is the size of Western Europe. It would be the equivalent of a country the size of Belgium having just 300 people. The Kantai have learned to govern that sparse space and time, retaining the oldest hunting culture in Eurasia. In history, seen through discoveries, the land of the Kantai became known as Ugoria, from where trade routes used to lead to India and China. Ancient Ugoria was conquered by Moscovy in a long, bloody colonial war. But the spirit of the Kantai has never been subdued. Scarcely 1% of the Kantai live in towns. And on distant rivers, two-thirds of the people have kept alive their mother tongue. Along with the ecological ethic of the forest world, everything taken from nature must be given back to it including life, which has only been lent to people. Vasily Tulchin, whose rifle killed a bear today, lives on the river Agon. The whole tribe must know in advance of the bear's arrival. Upon reaching shore, it must be received like an honorable relative. Already in the woods, Vasily has opened the bear's fur coat and, so to speak, taken off its boots and gloves, freeing the bear's eternal soul from its temporal body.
The bear is the son of Thorum, the god of gods, and the Kantai are Thorum's people. Married women hide their faces from the elder members of their husband's family. And the bear is everybody's elder relative, whom one may even marry. The god of gods, Thorum, <coughs> has sent his son to visit the tribe of Agon. The bear is an envoy. Its arrival means divine recognition of the Agon tribe. It pleases everyone. Once again, they are rulers of their woods, rivers, and the millennia of their history. But the arrival of the envoy also involves obligations. Thorum's son needs a house. Building the bear a house and entertaining this relative of the animal world requires common pine wood, Siberian pine roots, birch bark, and the top of a fluffy Siberian pine, Thorum's favorite tree. To be good for sowing, a Siberian pine root must be supple and tough. For birch and Siberian pine, one has to cross to the left bank of the Argonne.
Hmm. What's the word? Wielding an axe, Spiridon cuts out a song staff, the first object which must be completed in this ceremony. The song staff awakens songs. Songs awaken the bear and send it off again. <laughs> The women are busy dressing for the occasion. Very soon now, Thorum's son will take up his place in the bear house. A Siberian pine root becomes as supple as a leather strap. Hunter's tools, such as the drill, arrow, and boat, still have the same name in this virgin forest as in Budapest, Tallinn, and Helsinki, thereby proving that they go back further than 6,000 years. <coughs> Spiridon cuts the head of the song staff into a square shape. A small heart called Keir with a poker and a comb are made for the bear house. The six-legged elk is Thorum's animal. It lived after the big flood, at the time of the first people, and was too fast for hunters because of its six legs. To hold its belt, kerchief, and other ornaments, Thorum's son, the bear, is given a birch bark pouch called kunt. The preparations are nearly completed now, and the 88-year-old shaman, Ivan Sopochin, puts on his ritual dress. Vasily's family members keep their festive clothes in a storehouse built on stilts. These storehouses, both riverside ones for the summer and other more distant ones for the winter, still have no locks, because the forest, the Kantai's home, was for so long untouched and safe. Now the situation has changed. The raised storehouse is part and parcel of the hunting culture the oldest building in the forest belt. In it, the hunter keeps his food supply, as well as his winter and summer clothes. Built on top of tall poles, it is inaccessible to wild animals, including mice. It is in this type of beautifully proportioned building that the architecture of the Eurasian forest belt got its beginning and developed its aesthetic sense which reflects the Kantai's communion with nature.
The wood for the bear's summer cabin has been cut. The six-legged elk is also ready. The tribe gathers to inaugurate the last worldly home of Thorum's son. Thorum's son, the bear, is carried in a circle past the back wall of the burial cabin. The back wall is the back of the house. The roof is its belly. And the opening in the roof is an eye in the skin of the building's belly. The eye opens toward the god of gods in the sky. And through this eye, God can see into the house, right into the hearth. For Thorum's son, the eye in the roof is the door. God's envoy must be respected, entertained, and dressed. It must be decorated and fed, placated and sent off again. But it is also important that Thorum and his envoy should recognize the host, says the Kantai, the people of Thorum and nephews of the bear. That's why the birch bark masks are worn on the top of the head and face up into the sky. Wrestling, the men imitate hunters wrestling with a bear. The meaning behind this and the other ceremonial preparations is to announce, we are the real Kantai, the people of Thorum. The bear's house is built at a place of honor inside the human summer cabin. It is located between the back wall and the hearth on the longitudinal axis of the cabin so that Thorum's son can see through the door and look due south. The Siberian pine, with its big cones and tasty seeds, is Thorum's favorite tree. Thorum often caresses its top. The top, with its silky needles, becomes fluffy from the supreme being's gentle touch. <laughs> The Siberian pine, a distant forerunner of the Christmas tree of the Baltic Finns, is the living link between the bear's house and their god. The bear's eyes are two stars. Soon his sight will be restored. <coughs> <laughs> this son of Thorum, that met with a bullet from Vasily's gun, is a she-bear, 
she is dressed up and adorned like a woman. The carved wooden spearhead at her snout marks the central access of the summer cabin. From here, the bear's gaze reaches out through the door towards the south, across the summer camp on the Agon, across all the Kantai tribal lands and over their past, back through time to the great flood. The bird's tag decorating the bear's leg is from a bean goose. The bird was tagged by Jaybergers at the Castmere Observation Station in Holland on the 30th of January, 1980. It got in the way of a gun on the Agon, and now, after a few days, the bird's spirit will return to Thorum, together with the soul of the bear. So. Food is placed in the bear's kunt pouches. Fur smoke cleans the summer cabin and consecrates it before the bear is awoken. The bear's hut is complete. Now Pyotr Kuplandeev may start the waking song and uncover the two stars, Thorum's son's eyes. Vasily lights a fire in the hearth for the bear that has now awoke. Chow, yo, chow, yo, chow, yo, chow. 
Smoke and water have a cleansing effect. Sprinkling water brings health and good fortune. The forest around the Agon summer camp is unbelievably clean. Yet the relationship of the Kantai with the forest is more intensive than the farmer's relationship with his field. Offerings are brought to the forest. The earthly remains of fathers and mothers are trusted to it, and it is made other gifts. For instance, the blade of an axe must not graze the ground. Bear songs in the forest are like the sounds of the forest itself. A she-bear is honored for four, a he-bear for five days. The bear is put to sleep in the evening and woken up in the morning. Days are counted by notches in the front wall of the bear house. 
In the evening, a chip between the notches is cut off and placed beside the sleeping bear. Only then does the tribe do chores and sit down to eat. The bear has sung 270 songs about the Agon, a total of about 40 hours, over 40,000 verses. This is a fragile treasury of the unwritten literature of legends about the Great Flood, about the creation of the world, and about the beginning of man's long road of life, which every morning brings a new beginning. This daily rebirth, however, depends entirely on the memory of the tribe. Cool, 
Tinta agora é de não sair larga, o sul da sul do Brasil não sair larga. E mata se mata quando o ouro é muito coisa se cria para ir na mão de militar. O de rua de tempo não pode mostrar que está ali. O meu marido já é o homem de mim que eu não me ando, mas o homem de mim que eu conheço não é tão importante. Mungu de rua, o marido só é um homem de rua, o homem de rua é o homem de rua, o homem de rua é o homem de rua, o homem de rua é o homem de rua, o homem de rua é o homem de rua, o homem de rua é o homem de rua, o homem de rua é o homem de rua, Sto kontra jag var där. Väl och väl tar jag så du ska nu se på det. Det är många som kan gå in där man kan nu se kat. Kan nu se nu kontra var det man var fjärs med en bong hos kanda. Här måste jag tjuva med att mest att mölda jag kan nu bong hos kanda. Jag kunde inte kunna mest att många av de jag mår bit. Ni tjäna många ni. Det var jag kan nu mamma säga kan. Det var jag kan nu krossa på en tjänlig kvar. Är det inte det? Det var det så bra. Vi ser då kan du stära jag kan nu bara. Det var det så bra. Åmos. Ti jengri nama kacau, muar kus ut nama kacau. Ti nyep kacau, ti nyep portu dah lu yang ku kacau. Aju kus lu nama kacau, aju kus nama payle. Menit ya onet ni kus tu ada jual. Entah macam mana terus. Aju nampak rosak kus yang bersalam dah kuligan terus dah onet terus. Agar tu agar pilihan untuk jigu langs ni pilih agar tu agar untuk jigu langs ni kus ni alam agar untuk agar tu agar tu agar ni. Macam saya macam macam dah macam ya tu saya lu macam macam itu lu asam dah. Kau dah masih pakai, dah macam kau yang udah betul pasal dah, dah mesti mesti macam orang nak melakar. Hari tu tu, kau dah dah tu luar, kau yang dah kau nak kau senar, kau tu tu kau dah macam dah, kau tu mesti tu, kau tu semua dah itu. Ya kau yang kau tu, mana nama kau yang dah ada nama yang nak macam yang nak. Oh, ya kau yang nak kat nak kau dah kau beli tu 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 kau nak beli je tu. Kau kau jauh tu kau jauh jauh lagi kau tu, kau jauh 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 jauh. Bayar saya sendiri kon rugut dah gua, rugut rugut terasa kon tem ni macam tuan syak ni. Hama ke esok ya tu jadi wujud dah irsa dos wos, nyusa dos wos. Itu kau tem ni betul ni. Hul tu juga kau kon ye wos kau nyusa wos ni le ye wos mar wos ni le kosos kau lumi wos tu sekon kon dem. Tapi itu mak nup dah muruk ni nup boleh saya sekarang kon nyusi ye wos wat kuda wos ye tu sekon kau balas wos tu ye. This musical instrument is called the playing tree, Narsio. The bear has been put to sleep and then awoken on the second, third, and fourth day. Songs alternate with instrumental music, games, and ritual exercises. <laughs> Yakov Kuplandeyev performs an erotic comic act about a blind man's visitor.
Tests of strength take place in front of the open door of the summer cabin in the bear's field of vision. The bear is Thorum's envoy. He must not get bored. But above all, he must recognize his hosts as his relatives, the real Kantai. Timofey Kechimov plays the song of the little goose on an instrument called Torog Sabryo. For every song sung, a notch is made into the song staff. If it is a particularly good song, as many as three notches at a time may be made. The songs of this tribal elder live on only in this film and in the hearts of his people, for his spirit has now passed on. The song of the great crested grebe is about the flood. Long, long ago, the whole world was covered by water. The black-throated diver and the grebe kept diving and trying to bring up a beak full of ground from the bottom of the sea. The diver was lazy, but the grebe, on its third attempt, succeeded in bringing up a beak full of earth that began to swell and grow. All animals crept onto the ground. Only the grebe, who was panting and out of breath, was too late to join the rest. To this day, it still builds its nest on water. <laughs> An Agon mother may breastfeed her child for six years. The four-year-old takes care of the two-year-old. 
and the six-year-old imitates the work of his or her mother or father and helps to the best of his or her ability. The generation gap is non-existent. The new generation inherits the legacy of the old one and carries it on according to its own experience and vision. The song staff retains the general structure of the ritual, the number of songs, their approximate sequence, and any extraordinary events. In the autumn of 1988, we saw a song staff recording our 1985 expedition. The song staff is the Hunter's Chronicle, one of the numerous systems to safeguard collective memory as well as a vehicle for recreating the Kantai's unwritten literature. The main character in this sexual scene is Yepug, the eagle owl. The fertility magic related to it remains vague. The eagle owl thinks it inspires fear, yet only elderly women pretend to be afraid. It is killed by a blunt-tipped squirrel arrow.
The weather, too, has a role to play in the organization of the ritual. Sunshine brings the people outside. In front of the door of the summer cabin, there is enough room for dancing. It lasts till the dancers are exhausted. The dances are a combination of strict structure and improvisation, another secret to the preservation of the Stone Age bear ritual. The crane complains that Thorum's son, the bear, has plundered its nest. Vasili, the killer of the bear, is given a heavy bear bow. His task is to hit the six-legged elk and make it four-legged so it can be caught by the hunters. At about midnight on the fourth day, it is time to send Thorum's envoy off on its way. Thorum's son has been pampered and taken care of, kept warm and in general provided for. Though meeting the bullet was an accident, the whole tribe is tied to it. This is not a farewell. Thorum's son is shown the several thousand year old road back to the Kantai forests, the road back to Thorum's people. Oh, 